Uh, female model is great because it's very unified forms. Male model is good because everything's a little bit more, uh, a little more bumpy, you know, a little more chiseled up. Yeah. So, so you might learn more sculpting David. <laughs> Shape. It's essentially an egg because the um, skull is widest up here at the cranium. It's widest at the parietal eminence. This is called the parietal eminence up here. So that's where you get that egg like shape. And if you compare an animal skull to a human skull, you'll find that. The, the human is unique because it has this big brain, you know, and then we have this little tiny jaw. I mean, it's, it's not tiny, but it's, it's very um, delicate in relation to the brain. In other words, the, the brain is the dominant form here. Whereas if, if I was sculpting a lion, right, think about that, saber-toothed tiger, boom, you have this big thing out here. You have this big um, mechanism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Killing jaws. So we don't have that. I was actually watching this documentary about, um, I think it was about the history of food or something, and they were saying that um, just the fact that we cook our food has changed our jaw structure dramatically. You know, this man was, I mean, it doesn't matter what you believe in, you could think about it, just think about chimpanzees. This guy was living with chimpanzees trying to eat what they eat, and he said he spent eight hours so, a day. So, you know, the basic idea is our, our brains are are amazing and our jaws are delicate. The result is a nice egg shape. You can just think about a mannequin in the store in the mall. You see those, those simple mannequins. Some of them are pretty good. You know, they really look like a head. Okay, so we have egg shape. You could just call this, um, call this E. E for egg. The cylinder, the neck, think about it as a cylinder. And if it's a cylinder, again, it's not like your armature, it's not exactly vertical. The axis of, of this cylinder is a dramatic diagonal. Now you can look, this is not a very good skeleton, but whoops, you can see, oh gosh. Okay, it's not a good skeleton, but there's a little bit of a, just look at your neighbor, there's a little bit of an access to the neck. Some people, very dramatically, others, we had one model in my last class, she was really straight, she was like a ballerina, she was like really straight up and down, I've never seen that before. But, if this is a cylinder, its axis is, is dramatically like this, okay? As a result, the, the origin of the neck in the front is much lower than the back. See that? Do you think that angle is more uh, with men? No. No? I, don't know. I think it's more with me. Because I think our collarbones are slanted down more. I look more girly like <laughs> um, Yes? We can look, at, we can look around. Uh, you know, it varies. And it's, you got to be careful not to generalize because there's all kinds of exceptions. You know, I will speak kind of generally sometimes, and I don't mean to offend anybody. There are some universal um, patterns, you know, some truths that, that you, you see a lot, in, you know, between men and women. But then there's always, uh, you know, everyone's unique too, so there's, there's always exceptions to these, these universal statements. Okay, so again, the neck is a cylinder on an axis, lunging forward. And you'll have to observe on your model that angle of the neck. So half would just look like the shrunken head? Half is quite small, yeah. I mean, it's almost... Yeah. You mean three-quarter life size? Three-quarter, what I said. Quarter. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I was thinking coin. Actually, quarter would be okay. Because that's like, well, that's probably half. No, that's, that's less. <laughs> anyway, it, yeah, you, can do, you don't have to shrunk your head look. Like, like, if you do one like this big, it's a little bit strange sometimes. If you go real small, it's not, it's not offensive. Yes. You just to... So, yeah, I would say life size or three quarter. And that way, when we get to the nose and the mouth, I can help you get to those forms. If it's too small, it's harder to teach that stuff. So, egg, cylinder, shoulders, we'll make into two planes, very simply. And the planes will divide on the high point of the trapezius muscle. So your trapezius is, is this back here, you know, where all your straps will go. What do you mean the high point? Aha, uh -huh. yes. If you think about a shirt having a seam, yes. it's usually right on this. So a lot of times I call this the t-shirt seam right here because it's where the front of your trapezius is. meaning the back plane of the trapezius. Now, this break is always back of center of the neck. It's not right in the middle of the neck. It's a little bit further back. And it angles forward. See that? See how it comes from the, from the back to the front a little bit? So, don't think of it as as a, um, a sharp ridge so much as it is two planes coming together. So like a painter would squint, you know, you guys squint when you draw and paint. Squinting is good to see uh, values. So you can squint As a sculptor, too. It looks, it looks kind of funny. Sometimes the model thinks you're angry. So, all the good artists have uh, curves for you, I guess. So, that t-shirt line. Look at the, light, the angles on either side of yeah, the shoulder. Yeah, it would be. Right. So, easiest. okay, real quick, and then I'll let you guys sculpt. If, if, um, if you envision the clavicles here, clavicles are your collarbones. All right, that kind of creates like a shelf. Yeah. Right above that, we have this, this kind of meaty, um, massive part of the trapezius. And it really forms the top of your shoulders, where it meets the neck. Okay, okay now, as an artist, you, you, you're going to always have to judge where does the trapezius come in relation to the chin? You know, that's one thing to measure a lot. That'll tell you how long the neck is. You know, a lot of times the length of someone's neck, I think it has a lot to do with whether they have big, tall shoulders or slopey shoulders, you know. I don't know, if it's, it's not that your neck is actually, well, I don't know. I have something I've been thinking about a lot. Like, it's not, is, is their neck really longer or is it, that their shoulders are either up or down. You know? <laughs> maybe it's maybe both. How much does the mass of a person take into that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, whether they're big or petite? Yes, yeah. Well, it certainly affects um, how much you see of the, yeah. of the musculature and the skeleton. The angle of your clavicle? Like angle of clavicles? Just like? Yeah, like so. In some terms of how long your neck is? Well, some, you know, a lot of people go up like this. Um, others, you know, if, if someone has a real level clavicle, they'll have a very long looking neck. You know, 
and then some might go to that. I think it's the other way. But it depends on how curved they are oh, versus yeah. how straight yeah, right. and how pushed forward versus how far back. And, and I think this is a big factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your easiest to chop for. Yeah, I just think of um, Dustin Hoffman. Is that, that's the guy with that, right? Yeah. 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 His shoulders are like real sloping. Yeah. Really nice yeah. The little guy has that. Um, well, not necessarily a little, but you know, the drummer in my band had that. It's like always like, like sloping. Oh. And then other, other people have known that. It's not, um, it's not all talent, you know, it's, uh, you have a lot of talent, but you have a lot of knowledge, too. Okay. He also sculpted. So, see this back plane I'm making? This is the back plane of your trapezius. And, um, I think they call this the yoke on a shirt. So, a lot of times, there'll be another seam right there. Right? So this clay, I can save this clay. I don't think I'm going to go beyond that. So with this, with this plane, just think straight across. You know, it's, a, it's just like a triangular plane. Like if there was a clothes hanger here, here's the hook of the, of the hanger. So your shirt fits on that thing, right? So you can learn a lot um, by looking at clothing and how it's made. You know, people that make clothes, they have to think about this stuff all the time. Okay, this is a ball with a jaw. Anyone ever heard of that? Nope. Ball with a jaw. So if you think about the cranial mass as a ball, you know, Forget the face right now. Just think about that, that big brain case, right? That's the ball. And, you know, again, in comparative anatomy, it's really interesting if you look at, look at other mammals, they have very, a very small ball and a large jaw. We have a very large, very large ball and a small jaw, okay? That's what makes us top of food chain. <laughs> well, from the pulsing top. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, the ball, and then the jaw comes into play right in here. Look how triangular it is. Look how triangular the whole head is. Really think about it um, in a large way. On the back of the skull, the chin is an extreme diagonal, isn't it? So when you when you um, lay a skull on a table, it's going to look up at you. You know. Now we don't walk around like this. You know, we're we're upright. So so a lot of times the portrait artist forgets about this bottom plane here. This is the bottom of the head, and it's mostly hidden by the neck, but, but uh, we're better than that. We're going we're gonna to really learn this plane. Okay, so that's a couple of concepts. So, as you feel out where the jaw is, you're going to immediately establish the ear. The what? When you, whenever you put the jaw in, put mm -hmm. the ear in at the same time. And the jawline, you know, it's always back of center of the whole head. Sometimes it might be right in the middle. If someone has like a, you know, a big, big dome back there, or a small face. But um, generally, it's it's back of center. And the way you remember it is the front of the ear is the back of the jaw. So 
let's just, I'll sketch the ear in. The front of your ear is always the back of your jaw. They're right there. You can see the, the ear hole and then the jaw bone. So that's never going to move. It's always constant. That's why it's such a good landmark. It varies a little bit, but um, it tends to be toward the back. Also, observe this angle. It's not a true right angle. It's more, it's more opened up. So if you think about like a clock, maybe, if this was 3 o'clock, it's maybe 4 or 5 o'clock. It's, it's down here. Remember clocks? I don't wear one anymore. Um, so generally, this is a this is a broad plane. You know, the side of your face is relatively flat, but the ear is is a is a total plane change. You know, it's like um, I always think it's like a little trap door that someone opened up on a floor, on an attic floor. It's like it's like a little ramp that someone built. So if you squint your eyes, what happens when I put that on? Shines. Yeah, like this is a really shiny, bright bluey color from the window. This is like a warmer half tone from the electric lights. It could even be a shadow. It's confusing. We have a lot of light sources in this room. My new studio is perfect north light. But think of it as a plane first, first of all. Also, don't try to dig this out yet in the back. Just leave it solid for stability. So this is where you might want to employ a, a medium-sized tool like this and rake out a nice um, front plane. The front of the ear is going to slide right into the face. There's not really a, a dramatic edge between the ear and the face there. However, in the back, the ear is going to come away from the head quite dramatically. So you can think of it as, um, you know, it makes sense that we're listening to what we're looking at, right? Uh, when you do your jawline, make sure it's strong, even if it's someone is very subtle. Just look for that bone. You know, it's anytime a bone comes to the surface, you want to grab it. You know, you want to really utilize it. Male or female? Yeah, old, young, heavy, it doesn't matter. Just whatever you can do to, to see that bone. Indicate it. You know, you might, I mean, you might have a jowl form crossing over it, but you still got to pull it out. You got to find where it presents itself, because that's that's like your best friend having this relating to the back of the head. And then, as far as behind the ear, you know, a lot. Of, if you look at the Da Vinci drawings. For any art book, they'll, they will uh, draw these kind of lines to the front of the face. You know, basically what they're doing is saying that the height of the ear is about the height of the, the middle third of the face. There's always variations, you know. You might find the ear is a little lower than the nose. Maybe someone has big ears. Maybe they have small ears and a big nose. There's all different combinations. But a good general um, rule is that the height of the ear is about a third of the face. And art books will oftentimes break 
the face into thirds, the hairline to the eyebrows, the brows to the bottom of the nose, and bottom of the nose to the chin. I'll talk about that more later. But you can see how um, it's a good way to relate all the way across to the other side. And then as far as another landmark within the ear, I would like for us to put on, I may not put on, but take away the, um, what's called the concha. So, within the ear, you know, I found this like, a little head that fits right in there. So, this is called an inner tragal notch. The reason I, I'm going through the pains of putting that in now is because I'm going to take a series of measurements from that notch in a radius fashion so we can pin down the, the nose, lips, chin, forehead, neck. Okay, so, good job.